this DePaul team the style we can expect. Well, he's blazing with green and going on in the side to Comagees. That's what they like to do. St. John's in his zone. DePaul is red hot. But his team plays so loose this year, it's amazing. Kevin Edwards with that field goal, and the Blue Demons go out to a 10-3 lead. This is the Blue Demons' home arena, suburban Chicago. Chicago against New York, if you will, and the city of Chicago always up for that, that second city complex. They always want a piece of a New York team. A foul is on Rod Strickland. There's one spot left in the dance in Cincinnati. Already Indiana and Duke advancing there yesterday. LSU here earlier this afternoon. The winner of this game gets LSU. Those two games coming Friday night, Midwest Regional Semifinals in Cincinnati. Now that last shot by DePaul was not a three. Let me correct the score. I thought it was. It is 9-3 DePaul. And at the free throw line for the Redmen. 80% free throw shooter, one of the outstanding players in America. I think lately, Ren, he's been spending an awful lot of time orchestrating the offense. And for St. John's to win this game, he's got to do some things in regard to penetrating and building up some big numbers for himself early. Four-point lead, big afternoon for Danny Manning. One of the great confrontations in recent memory will take place in that Southeast Regional Semifinal when Manning goes up against Reggie Williams of Georgetown. He led the Hoyas back to a tough win today over Ohio State in the second half. I'd pay to see Williams play against Manning. What a confrontation. Hamachi's a big-time player, couldn't get it to fall, and it is yanked down by the Redmond and lose it underneath. Oh. Strickland the wraparound. See, this guy will dream up some shots inside. You can tell he's a playground ball player. And he just creates tide for a man his size. It's amazing how he can get him off. Good steal. He goes on one side. Jackson tried to get him. Look at this move inside. Strickland, another of those great guards out of the New York area. He's from the Bronx. He and Comagees combined for 54 versus Louisiana Tech the other night. And the press is on. DePaul wants an up-tempo game. Johnny's would like to slow it down, go half court, keep this game down in the 60s or low 70s. DePaul wants to make a run at the hundreds. A good move by Joey Meyer to keep that full court press on at all times. Of course, you have to score in order to be in position to put the press on. But he wants to up-tempo up -tempo this game. I don't know which guy I'd, I'd wish not to have to play to force an up-tempo, Jackson or Rivers. The glass off, playing with that broken hand. He has a pad on the left side. And the foul going against number 23. And that is Matt Bruss, second personal foul. Karnaseka wanting a timeout here early. Clubs going after each other a little bit with some hand checking, Brent. This game could get a little rough early. Jackson and Strickland really going after each other. St. John's only one of six. A very aggressive DePaul team. Joey Meyer wants to see if Jackson has been slowed because he was ill the other night. Took six sodas before his drug test, before he could pass any urine, and then he threw up on the team bus. They couldn't even practice yesterday. Coming in is Brust. Another miss, but he battles it back for it, and Bross missing the 10-footer, but there is a foul underneath, and that one is going to go against uh, It's against Shelton Jones, 31. I don't know if I think it's going to be against Golden pushing Jones, Brent. It did go the other way. Yeah. He was pointing in that direction. Now, one of the things that is going to happen here is Comagees is playing a one-man zone in the middle. He's not concerned at all about Bross. Now they're in the zone because of the out-of-bounds. But before even in the man-to-man, Comagees was just patrolling the paint. Bross is going to have to look for a shot. Brodnack's five, just checking into the lineup. Jackson here at the point. Two point guards out there. Jackson's three. Good job by St. John's to show a little inside attack to get that zone to pull back in there. And DePaul will use Andy Locks, number 14. He's out there. He's there for a sub. Jackson has all eight of the Johnny's points. Good 
move. Great move. So Green was the second. Green was the second guard last year. Now moved up to the forward position. It's amazing how this chemistry has come together. You'd never believe that a guy his size could play the small forward for a team that's ranked as high as DePaul, but he's really doing the job. Golden's rebound. Golden, another one of those role players, doesn't touch the ball much. Starts in the ball game, but is usually quickly replaced by Brundy. Edwards, the three. Rodnax rebounds. Strickland going to come right back into the game now for Joey. With just a little talk to to settle him down. All leading 16-8. We have 12-30 to go in the first half. Earlier today, LSU eliminated Temple. Willie Glass on the turnaround. Oh, good hustle by Jones. That's going to count. That was tapped from the underside back out of the basket, so obviously the basket's going to count. So here is Strickland returning for DePaul. Marco Baldi, the hero of the Johnny's victory over Wichita State in for the first time. And Stanley Brundy on the floor for DePaul. He's number 23. There's Baldi. Baldi going up against Comedy. You'll see some pushing in this one. He can touch it. <laughs> Comedy is much quicker than Baldi. Bodied him over there on the sideline and quickly picks up his first personal foul. 14 fouls on St. John's as the result of this one. The uh, problem is going to be Kamaji's and that quick first step. Now, Baldy, without question, pushing with the body to get out of there. Glass doing there. Shelton Jones, he couldn't handle Terrence Green either. And Green's off early, six points. Green uh, considered the outstanding high school football player in Michigan. He's got a body for it. All basketball here, obviously, at the Paul. St. John's trailing by eight, make it six, and Shelton Jones is into the game. He could be a key here for Karnasaka. Green is trying to go on every pass. Locks. Good shooter. A three. Has had trouble shooting that shot. Last year has come back a great deal this year. The ball early. Strickland. Maldi. And the reach in on Green. Green turns around to the other official and says, what do you want to be? Well, he made a pretty good point, right? You often wonder why the guy on the call didn't make the call. That bust, returning for Conaseca. He's out there with Jackson, Rod next, Baldy, and Jones. And Edwards coming in there for Green. You can see Joey Meyer wanting to keep this press and the attack on the entire game, using a lot of fresh people. Jackson trying to get inside Kamajis, and he does with a nice slicing move to the glass. I think a good move that time by Jackson to prove that he's going to be forceful. And Kamajis usually waits back in there, picks those off. Off Jones, out of bounds. Pass was intended in there for Brundy. Real good job that time by Bruss to help Ball be back inside. You don't want Comagees to get off with too many inside jumpers early. He can have giant days. Strickland has had trouble on national television, as strange as that sounds. He's not played his best game when the tube is here. Brodnax reaching in on Comagees, his first. And there is Joey Meyer, his father, the great Ray Meyer, is alongside us. He's the radio color man for WGN Radio here in Chicago, which broadcasts the ball games. Think he ever second guesses his son on the radio? I've listened to him. He does. He goes right after him. <laughs> but don't you second guess him in front of Ray. Then you got a problem. Edwards bangs in the jumper from the baseline. Ray is still a fighter.
Joey Meyer starting to mature as a leader, if you will. Valley has it knocked away by Laux in a foot race. Loose comes up with the ball. Kamaji's lead pass, bad gamble. Rodnax intercepts. Well, you know, you've got a nine-point lead. Not a bad idea, maybe, to go for a home run early. Try to knock him out. Got good crowd support here. New oh. Demon bench help. Jones off the fake. Got in a little too far, made a strong move, and then got in underneath the hoop. Yeah, he did the right thing there, Brent. When he realized he wasn't going to be able to make a clean shot, he just went all the way to the point to draw the foul, not worry about the basket. The second foul on Kamajic. That would be a number to watch as Willie Glass returns to the lineup for Karnaseka. You might notice his left hand as the game progresses. You might be thinking that's a cast. He broke a small bone on the top of the hand. I was overlooking it. It is a piece of sponge rubber that he has on the top and the bottom, and then it's heavily bandaged. It would be illegal for him to wear a cast in this game. The officials have checked it already. A little bit awkward to handle the ball. Oh, I think very, very difficult. Uh, anytime your hand feels strange, you have a very difficult time having any kind of motion with your shot. And yesterday, the plastic cast that he had on was taken off because the officials would not let him use it. So we've got a television timeout here. 9.42, first half. DePaul leading St. John's, 23-15. to 15. Why the demons and their fans are frequently blue this time of year. As the top seed in 80 through 82, they lost the first game last year. They suddenly became a Cinderella. Roared into the East Regional, and they were eliminated by Duke. Now, the crowd noise here is causing the officials' table a problem over alerting the athletes on the broken shot clock. Strickland nice underneath. Good tough guard on the penetration. Super pass inside by Kamaji's also, Brent. Because there is so much noise here, they can't hear the PA announcer. They're making up some cards over there, like with 30 seconds. They're going to try to hold them up someplace in the arena. We'll see if we get a picture of that for you a little bit later. Here's Jackson and Willie Glass. Ball back in his zone. Well, the reason for the zone, I'm sure, is because Kamaji's picked up those two fouls. They want to keep him in the game and protect them. 30 seconds. I don't know how half the athletes can see no, that. No, that wouldn't be of any seconds. That wouldn't be of any advantage at all. Now the PA announcement can be heard. Ten seconds. <laughs> it's like a quiz show out here. Jackson's off. Baldy with an offensive rebound and a hoop. Baldy's picked up a lot of confidence with that big shot he made the other night to win the ball game for St. John's. Big difference there. St. John's being down at 33%. Well, they got their hands full with Strickland, don't they, defensively, the way he can call. Look at him cut away from Jackson. Oh, he's something without the ball. Edwards fires the three. Short. Rebound, St. John's. Cross yanking it down, and here's Jackson. What's this high, tempo, slowing dribble of Jackson's? Bringing the shot clock down. Stays in the 2-3 zone. I would think those cards and that noise would be very disconcerting. When you, Brent, the, to hear the uh, clock coming down, particularly when you're the visiting club here and the crowd starts getting real noisy. We're down to 20. There's the 15-second announcement. Jackson run in. Ah, here's the outlet to Strickland. Big time. That's the third time today he has used the rim to prevent the defender from going up to block his shot. Very clever. Here comes the crowd, folks. Contact underneath. Ball day. The whole bench up. Two of them just checked in. Terrence Green and Kevin Golden returned. Baldy second person. That's Golden. Now St. John's already over the limit, so they'll be shooting the one and one. Seven team fouls against the Johnnies with 7-12 to go in the first, and five against the ball. They have one to give yet. 
you know, Edward, the college transfer. You start talking about putting together the chemistry of the ball club. Yesterday we had Indiana bringing in two JC transfers, the perfect chemistry for Bobby Knight with the athletes they added. And here's Edwards, the perfect guard to go ahead and balance off with Strickland and move Green onto the forward spot. It's amazing how one player can change the entire chemistry of a ball club. It's a bit of a crunch time for the Johnnies here early in this game. They are down 12 points already with seven minutes to go. That's that two, three zone. Sheldon Jones is open on the inside. Last does it, but again it is Jones banging in there with the rebound. That's seven points for Sheldon. They can hit him right across the middle. St. John changes, goes to a little half-court trap here. Please look for Edwards with his jump shooting. Run down by Edwards. Quicker to the ball on that side. Green seal. Kamajis. Edwards, he's hit from there already. That's two from that spot. And he'll be the man against that particular defense. You have to be so much aware of where Kamajis is down through the middle, and he plays those wings perfectly. Well, welcome those of you who are taking a peek here at the Rosemont. So far, the Blue Demons have been dominating St. John's. 31 to 19 to ball in their home whites. Jackson can't hit it. Yanked down by Dallas Kamajis, perhaps the most improved college basketball player in the land. This the other star on this Blue Demon team, Rod Strickland, big time guard out of the Bronx. Little hand checking by Jackson out there, not Paul. Oh, nice pass. Off goal and couldn't get the handle on it. And there is a jump ball situation. They have the possession arrow. The ball will keep it. Here's a brief game summary for you. We had the 45 second shot clock broken early on, so they've been calling out the time from the scorers table. Jackson and Edwards, the leading scorers, and DePaul blazing here at 65 percent. Connor Seca calls a timeout at 5:28. St. John's trails 31 to 19. Master new skills. To meet the world on its terms and yours. Feel the pride. Show the world your U.S. Live the adventure. Call 1 800 327 Navy. year he dazzled his way to gold this year american brian boitano defends his title at the world figure skating championships next weekend on cbs sports the southeast region field is set georgetown and kansas providence and alabama those four teams will square off at louisville on thursday night Ooh, that georgetown kansas game will be a good one Billy. it really would be the swarming defense of john thompson and uh, another guy with a great deal of experience in the ncaa tournament there's that Wrist I was talking about all bandaged up. Looks like Willie Glass of the cheerleading squad. Ball on the inside, Golden going strong to the basket. And Brust picks up number the three. Saint John's personal 23, Matt Brust, his third. For the ball, Kevin Golden. 
It is not going well. I remember this team in the Big East tournament back in Madison Square Garden was blown out by Providence by 29. Karnasaka will try John Hempel. And Brusk sits down with those three persons. If Hempel can get hot, he can use the three to climb back in this. He's going to need it. He has some slow feet, though, Brennan, despite the fact that he's got the body. The quickness of the ball ought to give him trouble. You mentioned the Big East. Up to this point, they have not lost a game in the NCAA tournament, but they look like they have a problem here. Five teams in the tournament. They all have won their ball games until now, and the ball stays in that 2-3 zone. Smart move by Joey Meyer for a couple of reasons. Now it's got to be St. John's catch him. He doesn't have to force tempo anymore. St. John's going to have to put the shot up. Plus, he saves Kamaji's down in the post, not picking up that third foul. Hustling in for the field goal. Smart move by Kamaji's not to come down with a chop foul. Ball doesn't want to slow it down too much. Good you want point. To know that? Good point. I, I'm surprised that Strickland's walking the ball up the floor. They had the tempo all their way when they were forced. Let me tell you what that does too, Billy. Edwards is going to squeeze the trigger. Got to take the crowd out of it a little bit. The crowd loves it when you press the ball down the floor. They want to keep this a home crowd advantage. That is 12 points for Edwards already in this game. There's glass. Bam! St. John's champ, Willie Glass. Any, do you do? Any question whether or not he can get up in the air? I'm getting out of the way when he's coming through. Real competitor. And a very good friend of Dallas Comedy. Well, DePaul recruited him about as hard as they have anybody. Out of Atlantic City, New Jersey, to get him to come here. Edwards with a hot hand forces one. But St. John's can't run down the loose ball. Oh, it was Golden. Golden only averaging three points a game. Kind of a silent man, role player. Great pass from Bondi that got away. Kind of tough at that short yeah, distance. Yeah, it was. You have to think about it. He was in a little bit close when he fired it, but I think you're right. Jones, I think, thought he was going to come up with a shot. You know, Baldi was 5 of 5. He hit that winner, but he hit his other four field goals, too. No, 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 no. He traveled. Here we're going to see the role player I was talking about, Kevin Golden. Nobody blocking him out. Just a blue collar worker in there, puts it back up the board. Good job. Now we see Willie Glass coming across the lane. One of the real power leapers in college basketball. Stanley Brundy returns and Comages sits down for the Blue Demons at the 310 mark here. First half. Hempel nails the three. Three point field goal, John Hempel. Hempel, of course, transferred from Massachusetts. Had great stats while he was there, has not been able to duplicate since he's been at St. John's. Bulked up so much. Louis Karnasek is much happier with this pace than he was the way the game started out. Strickland trying to post up inside on Jackson. 15 seconds. Nice job by Hempel staying with Green. 10. And he comes away with the field. Boy, that was good defense, though. Stayed right with him. Green just so strong inside. Goes back to man to man. Joey Meyer may be feeling the game is slowing down a little bit. Minute mark. Glass uses it. Strickland's going to like this. He wants to challenge Jackson with the dribble. New York City on New York City. Very well getting guards out of the metropolitan area over the years. No, no basket. Foul was before that. 13, Mark Jackson, his first. May I have your attention? 
Well, there are the survivors. The Big East has not lost a game yet. The Southeastern Conference with three teams still going. The Big Ten down to two. Big Eight with two. ACC with two. So again, the Southeastern Conference comes alive at tournament time. The athletes have prevailed. But you know what was interesting in that first game? We had a team from Philadelphia and a team from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The only two cities this year in the 64 field that had two teams. Jones cleans up the missed free throw. And that was the first missed free throw by Joey Meyer's team. They are seven of eight here in the first half. So the Big East could wind up with its first loser in this one if St. John's cannot come back against DePaul. St. John's will need a lot of firepower, and that sometimes has been a problem with this team. Intercepted on the turnover. Jones was running away from the pass. Jackson couldn't get enough mustard on it to get it down there. It's a better when they play that man-to-man. -man. That's a different game when they're man. That zone uh, just slowed everything down and played to St. John's advantage. Oh, what a noise he quit. Well, he is something. Oh, Rod Strickland with 10 points. Do you need to have guards to advance in the NCAA tournament? Think of some of the good ones we've seen. You know, David Rivers, Strickland, Jackson himself, Sherman Douglas, Penny Smith at North Carolina, Billy Donovan down at Providence. Those guards can take you a long way. And again, the man-to-man -man brings the crowd back in. Another Big East team faces difficulty in the second half. They'll have to come back against the Sooners, and that team's got firepower. And what does Pittsburgh lack? Guard guards. Yep. Glass. Oh, look at Sheldon Jones up over the top of Glass. Just put a saddle on his teammate underneath. There's three big baskets by Willie Glass. Down to 12, and time running out. Goes out of bounds. It goes over to St. John's with two seconds left here in the first half. They ought to get Baldy down underneath the basket, give him a toss, let him try it. Don't have time for that. Jackson. Oh, they hit the foot of the rim with a three at the buzzer. <laughs> That's it. 42-30. DePaul with a 12-point lead. That's in James Brown. I'm sure they'll get everybody up to date on what's going on in that Pittsburgh-Oklahoma game. The Why Pittsburgh rolled to the early lead, and our coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local stations. So it's DePaul up a dozen on St. John's halftime in Chicago. Back here in New York at our anchor post, Jim Nance, along with James Brown. Not the only Big East team right now in trouble. Pittsburgh is also. But the difference here, James, quickness looked like it might be that to me early. For the overwhelming majority of the teams that remain in the NCAA, quickness right now is what's serving them all well. And the home court advantage doesn't hurt either. But DePaul scoring the first seven points and now leading by 12 at halftime. All right, out in Tucson, Oklahoma now up 12 on Pittsburgh. Under six minutes to go in that game. Let's get a, a feel for that one really from gave, Dick Stockton uh, and Tommy Heinsohn. Position that time to set up that easy jump shot. Here in Tucson, it's been all Oklahoma. They've dominated Pitt in the early going in the second round game on a steal by Grace of Oklahoma and a Pitt foul against Aiken. It has been a frustrating first half for Pitt. They have turned the ball over a lot. They're starting forwards of Jerome Lane and Demetrius Gore on the bench with three fouls. And here at McHale Center, Dick Stockton and Tommy Heinz in Oklahoma has played it all the two. They have dominated the defensive glass to trigger that fast break. They've come up with some steals on their press. They've got the tempo right where they want it. And when they've been forced to slow down, Oklahoma has gotten a good inside game together, too. Here is Ricky Grace, the solid point guard from Dallas. Misses the free throw, but Dave Seeger knocks the ball away and a steal from Smith. Grace for three hits. And so Ricky Grace, who is the best three-point shooter for the Sooners, ups the lead to 40 to 25 and the biggest lead of the game for Billy Tubbs' six-seeded Oklahoma club. No question they've turned it up a notch. Smith, surrounded by red jerseys inside, loses the ball, but it's last touched by Oklahoma. You watch Dave Seeger right now. Smith oblivious to the fact that Seeger's coming around from behind. You've got to be a little bit more alert than that if you're going to try to make outlet passes. Seeger right there. 
A lot of people think it's better to get the Big Ten. So Pittsburgh and St. John's from the Big East in trouble right now, but there wa is one Big East team that's playing well in the second half, and that's Syracuse, James. Critics are all over Jim Beheim. His team has never won two NCAA games in a row. He's hoping to answer that question positively today. Right now, his team is nursing a nine-point lead, and let's check in with Tim Brandt and Bill Raftery. We want to welcome those of you who have been watching the DePaul St. John's game. We are at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Syracuse led by seven early in the game. It was flowing from the hometown crowd. Western Kentucky then was ignited by big Brian Asbury coming off the bench for four rebounds and 12 points. The Hilltopper scored the last six points of the half and trailed by two. And that was the halftime score. But since then, Syracuse has gone red hot, and it's 49-42. Orangeman over Western Kentucky. We've got 17, 15 remaining in the ball game. Timber Raptor. Of course, Jimmy Beheim went for a little half-court trap after the timeout. Now the 3-2 by Murray Arnold. Monroe is still hot. He's got 14 points. The gamble with the 3-2 against Syracuse. If you leave Monroe alone, he's going to finish you off. They have to play him. Stay at home. He also has his hometown crowd rocking. Oh, come on. Easy call. And to put Clarence Martin on the line. That is three personal fouls against Coleman. Both teams are shooting well over 50% in the first half. The advantage off the bench went to Western Kentucky. Well, Asbury, of course, two games in a row where he's contributed, and that's one of the problems that Western Kentucky's had. The big people do get in foul trouble. Greg Monroe now has... Although Howard having a good game for Syracuse, Syracuse enjoys the advantage in the backcourt, and they're going to need that in order to pull out this game. All right, it's been a big day for the SEC, James. LSU, the 10th seed in the Midwest, upset the number two seed, Temple. A 10-point win by the Tigers, and is the fourth straight year now that Temple has been knocked out in the second round. Also, Florida from the SEC, upending Purdue, the number three seed in the East, 85-66. Vernon Maxwell with 24, and Doug Lee had 29 in the first round game for the Boilermakers. Today, he was held to only four points. What a day for Danny Manning. 42 points, a career high. Kansas beat Southwest Missouri by four. And to open things up today, it was Georgetown coming back from 15 down in the second half to beat Ohio State 82 to 79. DePaul leading St. John's right now by 12. We'll get back to Brenton Billy for the second half in just a moment. DePaul leading St. John's by 12 points here at the half. The winner of this game goes down to Cincinnati, the Midwest Regional, the semifinals, and they will meet the winner of the first game, the LSU beating Temple. Remember last year, folks, when LSU went on the move, Dale Brown hugged my colleague Billy Packer, gave him a big kiss. Billy, you want him to kiss you again? No, I don't want him to kiss me, but I'll tell you what, I'm happy to see he's here because he's been great for the game. Dale, yeah, let's talk about this game first of all. I think it's kind of obvious that this the ball club is on a roll. It doesn't look like St. John's have much of a chance to catch him either. I think it'll take a minor miracle. DePaul's just really talented, much better. Louis doesn't have the horses they've got. One of the things you said to me when you first came up, and it's kind of interesting that you would be pulling on a conference base. I think it's great to see that. What Florida did to Purdue today, your conference is loaded with some good athletes. I'm really ecstatic that we've got three teams in the final 16. And I said about eight weeks ago, Alabama will be in the final four. There might be more than one SEC team, I hope. One of the things I also mentioned to you about, we go back, we go back a long way, back in the assistant coaching That's days. Right. One of the things I noticed about your maturity as a coach, there had to come in time when all of the outside influences came and you said, Dale Brown, I am a coach, I can take my team there, and now your confidence is such that it seems like it rubs right off on your ball club that they know no matter where you are in the season that you're going to be back and in the, in the mix. That's really an excellent observation, and being an ex-coach, you know that. When I first came, Billy, I wanted to do a good job for Carl Maddox, the athletic director who hired me, who I'm eternally grateful for. And then I did get sick of reading about North Dakota guy, he has no credentials. And I really think subconsciously I tried to prove that I was a coach. Three years ago, I made my mind up that I don't know how good or how poor I am, but I think I've got some ability. I'm going to do it my way. And if my way is wrong, I'll go back to Columbus, North Dakota and teach drivers education. Not yet. You may need to go to New Orleans first. I okay, so. Brent. All right, Billy, thank you. If Lou Karnasaka comes back, I know what videotape he'll look at. And our coverage of the championship continues. Message 
and a word from your local stations. Hey, the coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda value. Taco Bell, the cure for the common meal. And by Allstate, leave it to the good hands people to ensure your home, your car, or your family. You're in good hands with Allstate. How about the efficiency here in the first half, Billy Packer, for these two teams? Well, it's interesting to St. John's a little bit more possession there, but DePaul, I thought, when they, with the exception of the time when they slowed things down, Brent, really had the game all their way. Willie Glass scored six of St. John's last eight points. And Marco Baldi, he says, I'd like to play here outside Chicago more often. Friday night, he was five of five, and in the first half, he was two of two. And Lou Carnesecca says, big fella, get on out there. Now, let's remember Marco Baldi a year ago was ineligible. You remember the NCAA knocked him off the team. Subsequent to that, he has paid $11,000 back to his club team in Italy, and the NCAA restored his eligibility, and he has been a member of the St. John's team this season. Shot clock working. Didn't need it, though, really, in the first half. Certainly, DePaul didn't miss it, did they? Strickland Garden Jackson had his eye right on his belly button. Matt Brust with those three fouls starts the second half. Shelton Jones. Nice double team. Baldi could have gotten that ball right back. With Kamajis, you want to go ahead and try to get in some additional foul trouble right away if you can. Strickland on the steal. Here comes the sophomore. Oh, he missed the shot, folks, but that was some move he put on on the left side. This is first miss here at the Rosemont. Kamachi's outlet tipped by Jones, run down by Edwards. Golden reaching in his Jackson and he ties him up beautifully. DePaul's ball. On the hill ball, ultimate possession to DePaul. That's one of those handmade signs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, we have the electronic scoreboard that doesn't work, and now we have a painted arrow. You know, that horn I heard a little bit late here at late. the, uh, the head. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank goodness that wasn't a DePaul shot, or I would have thought that guy was a rooter, because that, that horn went off about a second and a half after the thing was at double zero. Foul underneath, and that's number one on Shelton Jones. You remember the game we had this year with Purdue and Illinois when it was double zero and the horn had not yet sounded, so it, it is for the show's double zero up there without the horn sounding, but... I think this is manually operated here, and the guy might have been for a snooze. Is Edwards squared up nice on that shot, didn't he? That's 14 points. Edwards is out right at his average. That's what he's got, 14 points a game. Four fellas in double figures at DePaul and, and the annual uh, scoring averages, so they're very uh, well-balanced ball club. Jones makes a move. Baldi follows up. His third field goal here this afternoon. He had a four. You know, he reminds me a little bit of Jerry Cooney when he jogs back now. I looked at him in the face. I hope he's a little more active than Jerry Cooney. <laughs> 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 He'd disappear on us for a year and a half. He loses eligibility. What's he fought? Twice in five years? I can't keep track. Kavachi's up over him. Tapped back by Golden, and here's Green. Good hustle by the Blue Demon. You know, I get a feeling that DePaul kind of went into that locker room feeling this game was over. They really haven't started pushing it yet. That can happen to you. You can fall asleep. Start thinking ahead a little bit. Baldy, his third. Talking about a guy, uh, and there is Marco. Given the stare. Talking about a guy that, that disappeared for a long time. Dallas Comedies came to DePaul, as everybody knows, one of the most heralded players that Raymar ever got. And then all of a sudden, he just disappeared, and this year he has been one of the great players in the country. He got the role. Billy, uh, what about Karnaseka switching Jones over on Comedies? And getting Bowdy someplace else on that defense. And Comedies a little too quick, he's going to really get him in foul trouble here. Indeed. There's a walk. 
Louis not letting it go any further. Great is over there as the color man. That's Chuck Swirsky working next to him. Wayne Larrabee, the play-by-play -play man. Let's listen to the coach. They don't use their defense to create offensive opportunities. When you have a team like that, you only catch up one or two points. Jackson. He's done a good job, but Jackson has a tendency to do that. He tries to get everybody in the game, which is a good trademark for a point guard, but he doesn't have the supporting cast he had a year ago. So I think he has to be much more effective putting some points on the board himself. You don't think Strickland doesn't want the folks back in the Big Apple to see what he can do against Coach sure. Ryden Joy Jackson? No question. A lot of pride here between two outstanding guards. We almost went for it. Golden foul Jones. That's his second personal. Our team fouls two DePaul against St. John's. And DePaul with two also. Golden will sit down. And Stanley Brundle, number 23, checks in. And those of you who have been watching that Oklahoma Pittsburgh game, welcome to Rosemont along with Billy Packer. I'm Brian Musburger. DePaul has dominated this game all the way. And Willie Glass scoring. That's his first field goal here in the second half. A total of eight points. And uh, Billy, what do you think the Johnnies have to do here to climb back in this? Well, they're not a real good come from behind team, Brent. They don't have a real good three point shooting ball club. They like to play a tempo game. They don't like to have to go out and chase. So uh, when they get behind, they have problems. We saw that with Providence. Great steal by Glass. He's a tremendous athlete. Didn't have the alley open. So is Grundy, who caught up to him on that play. But normally, Willie Glass would blow that one open. Playing with a broken bone, a small bone, on top of his left hand. Rust muscling in. Comagy's almost got that again. You notice how he can come off his man? If you're going to play DePaul, you almost have to make Comagy's guard somebody because he just plays that one-man zone in there. Now the first hurdle, get it to 10. The Johnnies have got it there, and you're right. DePaul has not played with the intensity that they had early on, whereas St. John's battling their way out now. Here comes Jackson, two on two, gets inside. Bundy nice. to glass. Great dish off by Jackson, and a foul underneath. That was a super play by Jackson. Maybe after the play, it was a pretty nice play, too, huh? A little hot dogging? Edwards' first personal and the team's third. You know, if you're DePaul, what you may have to do is go back to pressure defense full court, Brent, to get this team moving again. Well, Joey Meyer has called a timeout. He has used a timeout here. And we'll be right back. No, I did it! No, I did it! Did what? I just invented the wheel. Uh, may I make a suggestion? Sure. Try these. What are they? Monroe Gasmatic Shocks. Oh. They'll give you the best ride ever. Guaranteed. Monroe shocks and struts are the next best thing to the wheel. Guarantee? In writing, pal. Ooh. Hey! Yeah, great ride! Looks like we won't have to reinvent the wheel for another, oh, million years. Hey, no wonder America rides Monroe! <laughs> Light Fighters, the new light infantry. No matter where you are, in the jungle, the Arctic, the desert, or the mountains, you run out of day before you run out of challenge. You know, all this talk about building your confidence might sound like a lot of hype. Let me tell you, hype doesn't get you to the top of this rock. Be all that you can be. Hey, Gal. What? The elevator's here. Find your future in the <laughs> army. The guys at Car and Driver are pretty impressed with the Mazda 323. They know what they're talking about. 
They say, and I quote, it conveys a feeling of structural integrity and heft that belies its small size, unquote. What they're saying is, it's a small road car. They also say, quote, it's one impressive machine, not only a solid driving package, but a solid value as well, unquote. I tell everybody it's the best small car I've ever driven. Of course, nobody ever quotes me. Good burst here by St. John's, Billy. Good defensive effort. St. John's giving a lot more effort right now than DePaul is. Could have been a foul call there, but Mark Jackson comes up with one of his 360 spins, stays in the air. Good feed on off to Willie Glass. Excellent play. 15 minutes to go in regulation. St. John's has whittled DePaul's lead to 86 to 38. Glass at the free throw line, attempting to complete the three-point play. Tapped Good in by Jones. And DePaul's attitude is leading St. John's right back into this ball game. They've really turned it down a notch or two. And here's where that home crowd advantage helps you, Brent. The crowd sometimes can bring you back. Strickland, Bowley could not go up into him because he's playing with the three personals. 12 points for Rod Strickland. And for Jackson, who is coming down the floor, he has not scored yet in the second half. And here comes that crowd. Glass. Oh, what a quick step. Score it. He'll come and shoot again. Wait a minute. Score it, but charge the offensive foul. And Louie, unhappy with that one. You know, that's a call, Brent. We'll see this great first step by Willie Glass. That's a call. But I think we're going to have to see it become more uniform. Either all of them have to count or none of them count. In regard to that charge after the shot. Strickland. Forced one. Air ball. Out to Jackson. Great run by the Johnnies. Jackson inside. Now it's down to four at the 14-minute mark in regulation. Karnasek and the Redmen have climbed back in. They're doing it with effort. They... Johns has got the effort. DePaul has kind of left their game in the locker room. Inside pass intercepted by Jones. It's like two different teams. They swap uniforms. Down to two, 48-46 at 13-23. He has missed one shot in Chicago. <laughs> Kamajis passes it beautifully inside to Brundy. I wonder where the press is, Brent. That's what set the tempo for DePaul early. Now they're dropping back in his zone. and wanting somebody in the foul line. Jones and Kamachi's rebounds. An assist and now a rebound for the big fella. He's got some hands, doesn't he? Get that off of the left. And he wall. Foul off on the other side. He's really sat down, down on the baseline. He wanted the ball. That's the mark of any great player in the clutch. That is four personal fouls on Marco Baldi. He will have to leave. And Terry Bross returns. He replaces him. Louis loved the effort there by Marco. He probably would have needed a little rest here shortly because he's not used to going that long a stretch. Almost eight minutes. Andy Louts has checked in for the Blue Demons. Ten, nine from ten from the field. Maybe the Chicago Bulls would be interested. <laughs> yeah, he reminds you a little bit of Tom Borwinkle. Some guys hit well in certain ballparks. <laughs> oh, I heard that. <laughs> I was wondering. That went right over my head. It really did. Yes, Somebody do, Doc. Good morning. <laughs> Tom Borwinkle. Two threes 
zone with Hamaji's right in the center. Trying to play the whole lane. Boy, it really helps to have that shot clock up there, doesn't it, for the players? A three. Offensive all rebound by Bross and knocked back out of bounds by DePaul. Fresh 45 for the Redmen who are down by four, 50-46, 11-39 in regulation. And Syracuse with the home court advantage in the second half, leading Western Kentucky and trying to close out the field for the East Regional. They would play Florida if they win that game. Those matchups are Thursday the Meadowlands. Now it is back to the Redmen. They were down by 12 at the intermission. Double up on Jones. Knocked away. The ball on the steal. And they draw the foul. Second foul on Jones. Good defensive quickness down in the corner, even though they're in that zone. St. John's down to one timeout in this game. That may affect them. Louie had to use some timeouts early. Trails it by four. You spend a lot of energy climbing back into one of these games. And sometimes you don't have a whole lot left. Strickland trying to post up down inside on Jackson. Hadn't been able to get anything. Jackson won the foul on that screen. All alone. Edwards. Three-pointer is good. 17 points here this afternoon for the other guard. Kevin Edwards, a 6'3 junior. about ball handling against the zone a behind the back pass by Jackson really set things up because the zone was shifting as he was looking to his right give St. John's a lot of credit they've been in a tough Big East race all year long and serving them well now how much he's misses St. John's comes up with it it's Jackson Mark glides in for the layup they close back to within three 14 for Jackson, inside of 10 minutes in regulation. When you play against the Georgetowns and the Pitts and the Syracuses and the Dome, I guess you ought to be prepared for anything. Good move by Edwards. Back to Kamajis, who didn't get the handle on it, but he comes up under pressure anyway. He's been held to nine points here this afternoon. 9.30 to go. It's a five-point Blue Demon lead. And it's become a half-court game, Brent. Nothing happening in between top of the key to the top of the key, which really favors St. John's. Goodness, really, Glass hasn't gone for many jump shots at all. He's ready for one now, but he just can't get that ball shooting in his hand. Nice. Uses the glass. That's 16 for Willick. He needs a little room there to get that ball seated. Just catching it off the pass and going up would be tough for him. Games here this afternoon. Kamajis. And he was fouled. Dallas has been on that foul line 180 times this year, so... You can see the activity that he draws and the traffic he draws when he gets the ball down low. They reach the half with the Sooners up by the 10. Now team fouls. St. John's with six. And DePaul with three. Terrence Green has returned to the lineup for DePaul. He's number 13 at the top of the key with the ball. And he's the guy that really got him exploding out of the box early and then went, uh, went away on us. It's the St. John's pace being played here. Good double by Jackson. Shot clock inside of 10. He used his arm and got away with it. Missed the shot. Gloss outlet pass in the hands of Jackson, who's been breaking down on that wing. Under pressure, 
Kamajis comes up. Love was there, too. Kamajis rejected the shot. Love threw the foul. You know, Brent, look at the DePaul players seem to be more fatigued than John's players. All bending over, grasping for air. Number 22, Elander Lewis. Checks into the game for St. John's. He's a freshman guard out of Albany, New York, and a young man we did not expect to see here this afternoon. Not a bad shooter, pretty quick. Watch this mean free throw style. Fans of New York are very familiar with it. Whatever works, he's perfect. 4-4 here this afternoon, and the Johnnies have closed to within one. What a second half comeback by St. John's. 7.53 to go in regulation. I wonder if Dale Brown and I ought to get back in another little conversation, get the scout report Get out, that eh? videotape out, boys. <laughs> if the Johnnies win it, Karnaseka wants copies for everybody. Kamajis oh. flooded away by Glass. What a great defensive play. Jackson to save it. A collision. Lewis fouls loud. No doubt about it. Lewis crashed into loud going for the ball, but what a rejection down here by Glass. Well, Willie is an explosive leaper, not a goaltend at all. Knocked it out of there, then great hustle for the Jackson. Might have stepped on that sideline, but super hustle by St. John's. Now they're over the limit, so they're shooting one and one, that team foul statistic. DePaul still with a pair to give, and that probably reflects as much as anything the tenacity that St. John's has played with here in the second half. 50% free throw shooter though, Brent. Excuse me, a 72% free throw shooter. Block's got a funny release. Rod Strickland returns. Lox sits down. Here's Hit a couple of big free throws for him. Here's something I expected for quite some time from DePaul. A little press on St. John's, try to up that tempo. This is what really extended their lead for him in the first half. Jones breaking on the other side. Jackson couldn't get the ball over to him. Out of bounds. 